The two most common questions about intermittent fasting are when is the ideal time for the eating window and how long should that eating window be? It turns out that the answer to the question, when is it best to eat, is actually best answered by thinking about the other side of the coin, which is when is it best to fast? How long that time-restricted feeding window should be? I think eight hours is kind of a nice minimum. This is something that is going to be individual and is going to have to be determined on an individual basis. However, if you're going to try time-restricted feeding, I do want to remind you that taking a period period of three to seven or ideally 10 days to transition into it, not just going flipping from eating to three meals a day that span from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. and suddenly going to an eight hour feeding window, but rather winnowing down that feeding window about an hour or so per day is going to allow the hormone systems of your body, including leptin, the hypocretinorexin system, which are systems within the body that signal to the brain that food is about to come, allowing those systems to adjust so that you're not overwhelmingly hungry, irritable, and you're not throwing your whole hormone system out of whack. So we can view that point from the perspective of best, better, and worst. So if you are like most people and you sleep at night, you're waking up somewhere around 6.30, 7 a.m. or maybe even 8 a.m. Let's say you were to push your fasting window such that you started eating at noon and then you stopped eating at 6 p.m. Well, then you're not eating from 6 p.m. until let's say your bedtime is 10 p.m. But from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., your body is not yet in a fasted state because you just ate. However, you're starting to taper into a fasted state before sleep and then all through sleep and until the next morning and late morning, you are actually in a fasted state. Now, most people find it very hard to only eat in the middle of the day. So while that's best, it's ideal for sake of the fasting related improvements in health, it is not ideal and it's not very applicable to most work and family and social situations. Most people eat breakfast with others and or eat dinner with others. Some people eat lunch with others, but in general, it's hard to restrict your feeding window to just the absolute middle of the day. But from a purely health perspective, in a very objective way, that would be the ideal situation. Let's imagine a different pattern of eating where the feeding window starts in the afternoon, starts around 2 or even 3 p.m. Some people don't have much trouble or they can train themselves to get their feeding window out to 2 or 3 p.m. and then they will eat until 10 or 11 p.m. Assuming that they go to bed around 11 p.m. or midnight, they are not actually fasted in sleep because for the first six hours or so of sleep, maybe five, but probably more like six hours of sleep, they're still digesting the food that they consumed late in the night. So one thing is certain that you want your eating window to be tacked or attached to your sleep-based fasting in a way that makes it easier for you to get into the fasted state for a period of time. Now, it's not just the case that it's easiest to fast while in sleep, although that's true because when we're asleep, typically we're not hungry or looking for food or foraging for food or wanting food or trying to resist food, but essentially during sleep and in particular during fasted states of sleep, we are undergoing a number of automatic cellular processes that clear out debris from our brain, enhance cognition or at least offset dementia. This is now well established established, as well as a number of the same processes occurring in the organs of our body. So what we're starting to see here is that there are a number of constraints on when you can eat. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the social constraints and the real life constraints. Some of us, because we want to eat with our family and because our family or our significant others eat around 8 or 9 p.m. and that's the only time we're together, you have to eat late in the day. And that's certainly not a sin. I'm not saying that's good or bad. Here we're trying to establish, if you recall, best, better, and worst. So from both a practical and a health perspective and a purely objective view of how intermittent fasting works and can benefit us, starting to eat each day somewhere around 10 a.m. or around noon and then allowing a feeding window that goes until 6 or maybe 8 p.m., that seems to me like the kind of schedule that will allow you to get the most out of intermittent fasting but does not set you up to be really out of sync with the social rhythms in most cultures. What you'll find is that you're able to eat lunch with others, if you like, or by yourself. You will be able to eat dinner at a reasonable hour. Assuming that you go to bed somewhere between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m., that allows this tapering off or this transition from feeding to a fasted state and still allows you to capitalize on the special period of fasting that is sleep-related fasting. One surprising thing to leap out of this massive literature review on time-restricted feeding in humans is that relatively short feeding windows of say four to six hours do produce a number of positive health effects. 
However, they either produce no change in body weight or they tend to produce even increases in body weight. Now, of course, there's variation between individuals and between studies, but this is somewhat surprising. So the eight-hour feeding window seems to be very beneficial across almost all the parameters that we've discussed. And adherence, I should mention, people's ability to stick to the diet seems quite good on this eight-hour feeding windows. But when people try and undergo very short feeding windows of four to six hours, it seems that they are overeating in that four to six hours, at least overeating with respect to their metabolic needs. So what we can say is that the seven to nine hour feeding window produces all of the major health benefits of time-restricted feeding, as well as being pretty straightforward for most people to adhere to on a regular basis. Whereas the four to six hour eating window doesn't seem to serve people simply because people are overeating during that eating window. The important thing here is to establish a feeding window that you can comfortably manage, meaning that on average, you can obey a six hour feeding window or an eight hour feeding window or a 10 hour feeding window. And then to place that feeding window in a social and life context that you can manage on a regular basis. 